Hey everyone, it's Layla Shaver with another episode of Case Study Wednesdays. Um, so today I'm actually going to talk to you about a Georgia Court of Appeals case um, that's made quite a few ripples in our industry. Um, and it's uh, the case is H A and W Capital Partners LLC at Al versus Bandari at Al. Um, and basically this case has to do with broker protocol. So we had a firm, Aprio LLP, which was an Atlanta-based um, CFP-led advisory firm. And at some point, um, four of the advisors of Aprio, along with their CCO and a lot of their support staff, left the firm to join Morgan Stanley. Now, Aprio LLP was subject the broker, broker protocol, as was uh, Morgan Stanley. Also, the four brokers in particular, they were subject to notice provisions in their employment agreements where they were required to give notice before they left the firm for another firm, um, and they didn't do that. So essentially, um, in the Court of Appeals case, uh, the court rejected the lower court's decision um, that the notice provisions were not applicable or enforceable, um, in part because the broker protocol doesn't mention anything about notices or giving notice to your firm that you're leaving. But the Court of Appeals uh, found that, that it's reasonable to require notice and it allows a firm to make an orderly transition. Um, so if you even if you are subject to the broker protocol, if you have an employment agreement that requires you give notice prior to you leaving, that is still enforceable even though it's not mentioned in the broker protocol uh, requirement. So this has been a big deal in our industry um, because a lot of these bigger firms kind of enforce what broker protocol um, has in place in terms of requirements and they try to grid around any other additional provisions a broker may have when they're leaving and coming to their firm to avoid any uh, further issues um, and, and you know potential litigation. So um, let's take a step back and, and break this down a little bit more. For those of you who are not familiar with broker protocol or maybe heard about it and don't understand what it is, broker protocol came about early 2000s um, and it was a way to um, provide some peace between the big wirehouses because there was so much litigation going on. And essentially what it does, it's, it's an agreement between all the parties that sign on to it and it provides that a registered rep um, can move from one protocol firm to another and take certain limited client information with them and they're allowed to solicit those clients um, so long as they meet certain requirements. And, um, you know, the issues we see in these protocol-driven firms is that the departing broker is not following the requirements of protocol, um, and they, you know, start soliciting before they leave, they leave without notice, um, they take more information than they're allowed, and those are where a lot of the issues start coming up when you are dealing with uh, firms that are part of the broker protocol. <clears throat> um, a lot of firms, too, in addition to being broker protocol firms, have an employment agreement that requires some sort of notice. And so long as you give proper notice, um, you are free to leave the firm, take the limited information you're entitled to, and solicit those clients. Um, so, and, uh, and, and that's essentially how broker protocol works. Now, if you're leaving a broker protocol firm for a non-broker protocol firm, that's another point uh, where issues can come up because then you're not entitled to take that limited client information. You're not entitled to solicit um, because the firm you're going to is not has not subjected themselves to that agreement with these other firms. So it's just a it's it's a thing to think about when you're looking at advisory firms to join advisory firms that you're leaving, um, or just kind of looking at um, you know what is bro broker protocol and whether or not you want to be a part of a firm that um, has subjected itself to that. Also, you know we're seeing a lot of firms, um, you know especially after this Georgia case, Morgan Stanley actually left broker protocol. 
Um, you know, it, it provides some protections to the firm. It protect, provides some protections to the advisors. Um, and it's, it's meant to uh, keep the peace, so to speak. But it doesn't keep, uh, it, it doesn't protect a broker from raiding. So stealing clients. Um, and it doesn't protect, as we can tell in this case, um, a brokerage firm from saying that notice is not required because it's not part of the terms of broker protocol. So uh, big case uh, out of the Georgia uh, Court of Appeals um, overturning the lower court's decision, granting summary ju judgment to Morgan Stanley, uh, blow to Morgan Stanley, uh, largest wirehouse in the country, of course. Uh, but something to know and consider. So, if you are a broker <clears throat> leaving a protocol firm for another or leaving a protocol firm for a non-protocol firm, you really want to look at your employment agreement, look what you're subject to in addition to the protocol requirements. Um, if you're leaving for a non-protocol firm, then keep in mind you're not entitled to that limited client information. Um, and if you're uh, subject to some sort of non-solicit or non-compete, you're going to run into huge issues if you start trying to solicit clients or you start taking them before or after your departure. If you are unsure about what you should do, what your requirements are, um, and you want some guidance, give us a call, 770-462-2118. Uh, check out our website, um, and you can schedule a consultation through our website as well. Uh, www.myralawyer.com. Also, you can email me directly, Layla, L-E-I-L-A, at myralawyer.com. Anyway, I hope you have found today's case study Wednesday uh, interesting. Certainly, this, this case has been fascinating um, and has widespread implications throughout the industry. Um, so, uh, don't forget to visit our website, www.myralawyer.com, or, or give us a call, 770-462-2118, to schedule your consultation. Thanks.